my god what up ho biscuits it's your girl skitten and i am hot it's fucking hot outside we had to air the fucking house out because my dumb ass threw away raw chicken inside in the inside trash can and then fucking came home today like huh i wonder why my house smells funny like sometimes i am so goddamn dumb like sometimes this hair color suits me you know what i mean like you know like you know you know you know you know any who's in what up hope biscuits it's your girl skitten back at it again and we are here for some more overly sarcastic productions um you guys have uh really been enjoying them um i haven't really been shooting them just because i just feel like they're super like not like time intensive but just like I just feel like I need to engage so much with them and I want to be sure that like I have enough energy to do that you know so I and make sure like I'm actually remembering shit because like we all know your girl has issues with memory okay we all we all know this we know this um so we are here to watch uh, miscellaneous myths and this one is going to be about Perseus uh correct me if I'm wrong which you guys always do uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Perseus the nigga that killed Medusa? Yeah, that dude. So I am excited to see um, their take on it because I just, I just, ugh. I just, I love their breadth of knowledge on like all of these subjects. It is just like so, just like, you know, just like, you know, like, you know. And see who's in. Let's go ahead and get started. And a three, and a two, and a one, and a play. So, this is the first video in what'll probably be a longish series of miscellaneous myths. Now, initially, I'll primarily be focusing on Greek mythology, as it's one of the mythologies that's been more influential to popular culture in the past millennia or so. But I think we all know how bad I am at staying focused on one subject at a time, so we might roam pretty far afield in this series. Don't get disoriented if we leave off in Thebes and start up again in Central America. Now, to start us off simply, I'll be covering a myth that you're probably all at least vaguely familiar with, mostly because references to it got catapulted back into popular culture within the past few years. It's the story of Perseus and Medusa. Now, now, as is often the case in Greek mythology, Perseus' story begins long before Perseus actually does. In fact, it begins with a prophecy. Now, this particular prophecy isn't as cushy as the last one we dealt with. In this case, the king Acrisius was told by an oracle that he was doomed to die at the hands of his grandson. Acrisius took this news about as well as you'd expect and decided his only course of action was to lock his childless daughter Danae in an underground cell and basically leave her there to die of old age. You know, I don't often say this, but why don't you just kill her? But Zeus- Right, like... I thought that's what she was gonna say. I thought he was gonna be like, then he killed his daughter, but it turns out like he had an illegitimate kid, a la Dragon Age, right? Like, but okay. Who never met a mortal woman he didn't want to make sweet, sweet arrows to, spotted the beautiful Danae in her prison and, unwilling to let something like eternal solitary confinement stop him, turned himself into a rain of gold and showered himself into her cell, whereupon he made her pregnant and left. Man. He turned himself into I just there are so many disgusting jokes that can be made about this so many don't you dare make them in my comment section don't you do it we all know the jokes that could be made don't fucking do it be mature don't do it don't fucking do it and isn't that just like a deity? You can bet he's not gonna pay child support either. So Danae has a kid and her dad panics because of the prophecy and stuffs her and the kid into a trunk and throws it into the ocean. Jesus! For the kind of father figures this kid has, it's gonna be a miracle if he doesn't grow up to be a psychopath. So Danae and her son, whose name, as you've probably already guessed, is Perseus, drift ashore on the tiny island of Seraphis, where they're taken in by a childless fisherman and his wife. So Perseus grows up with three parents and one absentee godfather, and his life is pretty chill. Until the king, Polydictes, decides that Perseus' mom has got it going on and decides to <laughs> make her marry him. However, Danae refuses, and Polydictes is too scared of Perseus to press the issue. He's scared of Perseus? Okay. So, like any sane ruler, he decides to get Perseus out of the way by sending the lad on a quest that'll almost certainly kill him, and that way he'll be able to get with Danae without any interference. Polydictes convinces Perseus to go out and slay the Gorgon Medusa, a woman who had once been beautiful, but after she and Poseidon got busy in one of Athena's temples, she was cursed by the goddess to have badass snake hair and also be so hideous as to turn anyone who looks at her into stone. Modern interpretations usually make her super hot anyway, but hey, whatever. So Perseus, young, hot, and full of- I feel like there's a possibility Medusa could have been attractive, right? Like, right? Maybe? Kind of? 
of crippling naivete, ventures out into the great wide world to find him a deadly gorgon. However, thanks to some divine nepotism, he's given a leg up by the various Greek gods, who give him some magic items to make the quest actually possible. Hermes gives him a sword and his winged sandals, and Athena gives him the mirror shield, because apparently petrifying ugliness only petrifies you if you look at it head on. Then, they tell him that he needs to visit the Grey Sisters in order to find out where the gorgons actually live. So he scoots on over there and gets the Grey Sisters to tell him where the Medusa lives by holding their eyeball hostage. It... Uh. He just like, he just like plucked it, like, ugh. Makes just as much sense in context. Anyway, after marking the location on his map, Perseus goes to the next quest marker, which happens to be the Garden of Hera, who's oddly cool in his presence, despite her typical reaction to Zeus's kids. Anyway, the nymphs of the garden give Perseus a sack to hold Medusa's head and a magic helmet to make him invisible. Magic helmet. Magic helmet. Guess which one of those is probably going to be more useful? Magic helmet. Now, I wish I could tell you that Perseus and Medusa had some awesome final showdown, maybe with lightning and rains of fire or something, but Perseus is a pragmatic hero, so he sneaks in while Medusa's asleep and chops off her head. Well, that was easy. Disgusting. But this myth is missing something. Well, a few things, actually. Where's the drama? The final showdown? Could we maybe throw in a prayer? It's the final showdown. <laughs> princess or something? Ask and ye shall receive. As Perseus is flying home, he spots a beautiful princess, whose name is Andromeda, tied to a rock by the ocean. When he pops down to ask her what's up, she tells him that her mother managed to piss off the ocean itself, and it sent a sea monster to ravage the land. They can only make it stop if they sacrifice Andromeda. Now, Perseus does what any red-blooded Greco-Roman hero would do, and vows to slay the sea monster and save the princess. Of course! And he does. Okay, fine. Perseus flies around the thrashing beast, frantically dodging as it does its absolute best to swallow the young prince whole. But Perseus is too nimble for the cumbersome creature and wears down its defenses little by little until finally, finally, the monster lays slain at his feet. Happy. So Perseus returns home to Polydictes and delivers the Medusa's head to him, unsurprisingly petrifying him and his entire court of bad guys in one fell swoop. Then he and Andromeda get married, the fisherman who saved him as a baby becomes king, and everyone ends up happy. Oh, but what about the, the fisherman who saved him as a baby becomes king? Bitch, what? What the fuck? Shouldn't he become- what? Why would the fisherman who say Okay. The prophecy. Well, see, a few years later, King Acrisius visits the basically Olympics in the city of Larissa, whereupon Perseus accidentally beans him with a discus. He said he beans him with a discus. Bitch, what the fuck? Danae does not get enough shit. That woman survived more shit than Rasputin, and she gave birth on her own. That alone should have gotten her a medal. So, I really enjoyed that. Um, I kind of wish we'd gotten more into the Medusa aspect of the whole thing. Um, just because I just, I love Medusa. And like you read so many stories and so many iterations of like Medusa and et cetera, et cetera. And um, I think one of my favorite ones was where it said that obviously we know like in the lore that we're given, right? That Athena is punishing Medusa. But like, what was I reading somewhere? Like that doesn't even sound like Athena to like punish somebody for getting raped. Like, you know what I mean? So somebody was saying like, what if rather than punishing Medusa, Athena was like, giving Medusa like the gift of like not only like being so ugly so that like nobody's gonna want to rape her again right but also being able to like freeze anybody or you know turn to stone anybody who does come bother her so that like any other like so that nobody can hurt her in that same way you know what I'm talking about like um let's be real Medusa probably has some PTSD from Zeus okay and like after something like that happens after an incident like that happens like you don't like really want to be touched you don't want to be seen etc etc so you know what i read and i can't i think I, i'm like i want to say i read it on tumblr and that sounds so fucking dumb like i'm not so i'm not like quoting it as an actual source obviously i'm just saying like it's like just perspective that i never thought of and i really enjoyed um but like what if athena was instead like let me gift you with these abilities and you know like with um looking like this so that you know when you engage with people you know it's on your own terms you know what i'm saying which makes killing medusa like super fucked up because like 
literally what did that hoe ever do to anybody except live her fucking life like she lived like literally she was living her life being a little you know little young hot priestess you know what i mean and then zeus just like rolled up and like fucking did his zeus thing you know that shit's fucked up like when like eventually we'll have a whole ass video about like how fucked up it is that like zeus just continuously forced himself on people and that was just like a way of life and a thing you have to watch out for like oh, 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 watch out it might be zeus like you know um but also like she's literally like after the fact after athena cursed her or whatever like she literally was just out there living her life she could have had a fucking succulent garden. Don't nobody know. All we know is that this nigga wasn't to go kill her. And like Perseus thought that was like a cool fucking thing to do? Question mark? Like, what? Like, this king was like, hey, go kill this Gorgon. And Perseus was like, okay, I'll go kill this person. You know, this monster that used to be a woman. That's super fine. Like, let's, like, come on now, Perseus come on so anti who's in i really enjoyed that i like i said i just i love overly sarcastic productions i love how they draw things i love how they edit things um and I, like i said i just really love how like in-depth their knowledge is but how they make that knowledge like accessible to everybody that's just like ugh, it's so perfect they're so perfect i love them so anti who's in peace out hobiscuits it's getting lit